This is the Motorola Edge 40 Neo disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter or X so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Next, heat needs to be applied to the back plate using a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the vegan leather backplate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off. So you won't need to take apart the phone to replace those. Looking at the other side, we can see the LED flashboard located here. There are now 16 Phillips screws which need to be removed. There are numerous antenna lines drawn on this top plastic cover which are the light gray color lines, including the NFC antenna. There's some graphite film on the other side to help transfer heat. There's an additional large area of graphite film over the motherboard, battery, and the speaker assembly on the bottom, which will need to be peeled off. Now the battery cables can be disconnected from the main board, followed by the rest of the cables. The coaxial cables on the right side of the board can be disconnected by just popping them off. Now to remove the main board, there's a single Phillips screw holding it down. So looking at the main board, we can see the 50 megapixel primary camera and the 13 megapixel ultra wide lens. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a secondary microphone on the top, a liquid damage indicator sticker which is that white sticker, and copper tape on the shield to help transfer heat. On the other side, we have a better look at the 32 megapixel front facing camera, the proximity sensor located on the top corner, and more copper tape on the back shields as well as thermal paste top transfer heat. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see additional thermal paste on top of this chip. And once the thermal paste has been cleaned off, we have a better look at the processor. When it comes to removing the battery, there are no pull tabs provided to help us pry it off, so we'll need to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply it to the sides of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a look at the 5000 mAh battery. Once the battery has been removed, we can see the flex cable for the screen which is routed through an opening in the mid-frame. So if you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws on the top plastic cover and the cover itself, disconnect the battery cables and the screen cable, pry the battery off, giving you access to the screen cable, at which point you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, you pry the whole screen off, apply new adhesive, Reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone.
Once the graphite film has been peeled back, we can see a 3D layer of graphite, which runs underneath the battery and the motherboard. And again, the graphite is used to help transfer heat. There's another antenna line drawn on this bottom plastic cover. And another liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker. This flex cable connects the main board to the sub board or charger port board, as well as the SIM reader board. There's a single Phillips screw which needs to be removed, which is holding on the metal cover. Here's the SIM reader board. And this is the sub board or charger port board. There's a red rubber gasket around the charger port itself, and the primary microphone is located underneath the shield. Here's a look at the bottom speaker. The fingerprint reader is held on with some adhesive. In order to replace that, you just have to apply some heat and gently pry it off. And the same goes for the vibrator motor, which is located on the bottom corner. There's an additional liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker, seated on the frame underneath the SIM reader. This white coaxial cable is connected to a 5G antenna board on the bottom corner. Now if you need to replace the flex cable for the power button and volume keys, you'd also have to pry the screen off since the flex cable is routed through an opening in the mid-frame and is sandwiched between the screen and the frame itself. The opening on the frame on the bottom for the speaker assembly, as well as the openings for the microphones, all have rubber gaskets and mesh filters. And for those who are worried about puncturing or damaging the microphone or filter, both on the bottom and top, you won't need to worry since both the filter and the microphone on both are seated above the holes so they won't be damaged. And finally, the top earpiece speaker located on top is held on with some adhesive, so if you needed to replace that, just apply some heat and pry it off. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.